Hi, I'm Miles Prince. I'm a haematologist uh, from Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting case, unusual case, of a primary cutaneous B-cell lymphoma, specifically diffuse large B-cell lymphoma leg type. And this is a made even more unusual in that this is a leg type which is occurring outside the leg, which is uh, a recognised entity uh, and one in which um, I'd like to discuss uh, because it uh, frequently comes up um, as we're considering the differential diagnosis of uh, B primary cutaneous B cell lymphomas. So this is a, a lady that I saw very recently. Uh, she was an obese 54 year old uh, Pacific Islander and uh, she developed this lesion over the left side of the mandible about uh, 20 centimetres in, uh, uh, about a, uh, two centimetres in size, uh, and it was a definite nodule, uh, but without ulceration. Uh, it was uh, entirely excised, at least clinically, uh, and um, uh, it showed a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and I'll come back to that. On specific questioning, because I saw her after the lesion had been removed, uh, she tells me that it had been present for quite a long time, about 18 months. And it was not tender uh, and not so associated with injury uh, or irritation. Import that's important because um, primary cutaneous B-cell lymphomas can be uh, 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 misdiagnosed as uh, uh, so-called insect bites or irritative reaction. It was pretty clear that this looked like it was a neoplastic process uh, taking place. And uh, I'll come back to the pathology because it was pretty definitive. Uh, but importantly, this lady had a number of comorbidities. As I said, she was morbidly obese. Uh, and in fact, uh, she'd been a long-standing smoker and had a long-standing history of insulin-dependent diabetes. She'd stopped smoking a few years ago, um, but in fact, had had after she'd had a cerebrovascular accident uh, back in 2009, which uh, left her with uh, hemiplegia and quite limited mobility, and she was in a wheelchair uh, when she attended the, uh, the consultation. As I said to you, she had uh, diabetes requiring insulin uh, and uh, this was moderate, moderately well controlled. Uh, she'd had uh, rheumatic fever as a child and she had a mitral valve, re a re a mitral valve replacement requiring ongoing warfarinization. When I saw her, she had um, a, um, a well-heeled scar on the left side of her mandible um, and there was a, a pink plaque around it, but I felt that that was probably um, a healing rather than an induration. Uh, and importantly, there was no other skin lesions and there was no evidence of uh, systemic lymphoma because that was uh, one of the key differential diagnoses, uh, a primary systemic uh, B-cell lymphoma with cutaneous involvement needed to be excluded. So really, as part of that uh, primary exclusion, we needed to undertake full staging and the obvious things to do was a PET CT uh, and a bone marrow aspirate and biopsy, uh, and that was performed. And at the time of that initial consultation, I explained to her that we needed to consider a management plan um, either as a primary cutaneous lymphoma um, or as a um, systemic lymphoma. Um, so I was assuming that, um, that uh, the staging investigations at that time were going to be clear uh, and we talked about treatment options. Uh, I'll come back to those at the end, but primary cutaneous diffuse large B-cell lymphoma of the leg is a specific entity which occurs in older people and often those patients can't tolerate chemotherapy uh, and that's a um, uh, one of the issues as to whether we should be giving chemotherapy to this lady or not. And I'll come back to that. Uh, but if we were to consider systemic therapy, the choice was going to be chemotherapy uh, or our chemo radiotherapy or radiotherapy alone. So we undertook the biopsy uh, and it's detailed here. But to summarise the photomicrographs, um, it showed uh, a classic features of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Uh, there was a diffuse and nodular pattern, as you can see here, uh, from the standard H&E sections. 
If we look at uh, higher magnification, again, you can see that slightly nodular appearance, but definitely a diffuse large cell involvement with really no small cells detectable. Uh, and that's at the higher view, uh, these uh, abnormal looking bizarre lymphocytes. And uh, you can see uh, those detailed there. On spe special stains, CD20, um, quite strongly CD20 expressing uh, uh, on both standard and higher power. Uh, and MUM1 uh, was strongly expressed uh, in uh, the large cells. If we look at BCL2, as we frequently see in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma of the leg, uh, it was positive. And uh, importantly, FOXP1 was also positive. I haven't got IL-6 there, uh, but it was weakly positive. So an activated B-cell phenotype, uh, BCL2 positive, all classic features of primary cutaneous diffuse large B-cell lymphoma of the leg. There was, uh, it did not have the pattern of uh, follicle center cell lymphoma nor marginal zone lymphoma, and I'll come back to that. So it was really important to do the uh, staging investigations and a bone marrow showed absolutely no evidence of lymphoma. Uh, and a PET scan, which was really from my point of view the most critical uh, assessment, showed that there was no evidence of uh, lymphoma. There was um, a uh, lesion seen in the lungs, which was probably uh, a granulomatous lesion, uh, which um, uh, was located in the lungs and you can see there on the CT scan but there was definitely no FDG avidity um, uh, so a non-specific finding in the lung uh, very unlikely to be lymphoma and uh, we have not investigated that any further. So here we are left with uh, uh, a patient who has a number of comorbidities uh, with a large cell lymphoma of her leg, uh, so of non-leg type. So really I'd like to discuss this entity uh, and, um, and uh, talk about this individual and the, and the issues around it. So diffuse large B-cell lymphoma of the leg is uh, well recognised in the WHO classification. It usually has an ABC uh, type phenotype uh, and it behaves aggressively. Most patients are elderly, the average age is 80 to 85 years of age, and that means that in most patients we can't offer systemic treatment. And, and these patients have a high relapse rate um, of 80% plus. And the question really does remain, is that because we simply cannot deliver the chemotherapy, or is this because it's an aggressive disease? And there's very limited data um, around that. Uh, so we believe it's probably a mixture of both age, uh, comorbidities, and inability to deliver chemotherapy. So for a lot of elderly patients, we have to give uh, radiotherapy alone. And so um, the data around radiotherapy alone would suggest a relapse rate of somewhere between 60 and probably closer to 80%. Um, so what are we... Um, what do we do in this patient where they have diffuse large B-cell lymphoma leg type but outside the leg? Well, by itself, it doesn't necessarily mean a worse prognosis. Um, the, there's been a number of uh, criteria that would suggest that, uh, that would indicate that it's worse if it's BCL2 expressing, and this patient does have that, uh, and if it's multinodular. This was slow in its progression, and importantly, we've excluded F follicle center cell lymphoma and marginal zone lymphoma. They, that is the most important thing to exclude because most um, uh, lesions that are B cell outside the leg that are called DLBCL are later found on review to be follicle center cell and do not require chemotherapy. In this lady, she definitely has diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So, we have a lady with um, severe comorbidities and true DLBCL outside the um, leg. If she didn't have the comorbidities, I would have no question in, in uh, offering her systemic chemotherapy with um, CHOP-based treatment, either given every 14 days or 21 days with rituximab. Uh, we, we don't have a definitive um, uh, numbers around cure rate in young people, um, but it's probably best estimated around 40 to 50 percent. So in this lady I've elected to give her radiotherapy alone. 
There's the primary treatment, 45 gray, which is high dose, uh, the classic dose that we would use for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. I know that uh, the cure rate with this is probably around 20 to 30 percent at best. However, there is a cure rate in a lady who has substantial comorbidities. I'll be monitoring her closely and if her sh disease should develop uh, in other skin sites or systemically, then I will be able to offer her chemotherapy. It will be much riskier, obviously, with her comorbidities, uh, but hopefully there's still a reasonable chance of cure given that she would not have been exposed to chemotherapy. I'm also going to add in single agent rituximab, which has been our policy in, in patients with uh, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma of the leg who haven't been able to get chemotherapy in the hope that that may improve remission duration. Again, there's no data around that area, uh, but we are exploring it uh, and hopefully we'll treat a number of patients in a similar fashion over year, years and, um, and examine the uh, data in the hope that we can shed some light as to whether single agent rituximab uh, in addition to radiotherapy has any effect. So hopefully an interesting case for you uh, and um, perhaps be able to bring you up to date in the future. Thanks very much.